So I want to thank everyone for joining us today. Happy holidays, everyone. And we are here with the fabulous James Brunson. James is a practicing psychologist for over the last 10 years, working with in his private practice in both couple and family therapies. And in the and he's located in the DC area. So if you ever want to look him up, a quick and shameless plug, he is the best of the best, right, James? I'm just saying thank you because we love when you come here and you bring us these healthy, wonderful discussions and tips. And today you're going to be talking to us about a holiday paradox of coping with stress during the holiday season. And right now I am stressed out and I need to learn how to cope. So without further ado, James, the floor is all yours. Awesome. Sandrine, I, I declare, I just need to take you everywhere with me when I have a presentation because like you, you just you got it. You know, you just you, you know you know how to tee it up for me. And so I, I am so grateful uh, for that introduction and also just to be here with everyone. Um, while we may be small in numbers, the energy here is enough because we got people here who are experiencing stress. Like it's it's that time of year. Um, regardless of the holiday traditions that you celebrate or not even celebrating traditions at all, um, just this time of year brings about a host of movement. It is colder, it's darker, it's, you know, getting to the end of the year projects and getting to the close of yet another year. And so I've noticed through the years that I've been practicing that this time of year, regardless of the traditions, regardless of the ideologies, there's a lot of movement around this time of year. And so I hope that something is said or shared um, that it may provide some support, relief, some soothing, or just some, some energy to get through it. And as people come in, um, I'll, I'll do some... I'll have one slide about uh, some housekeeping things, um, but I wanna invite you all to like show up in this space as you feel comfortable. Um, ask whatever questions, share whatever things that you feel comfortable with. Um, and we'll try to make this thing as uh, interactive uh, as possible. So for those of you who may have sat in on some of these webinars before, there may be some familiar information because it is that important, um, particularly around this time of year. All right, I am going to start the slideshow. Go right ahead, James. All right, thanks. And you all let me know if you can see that. Uh, let's see. If you can get some nods and hands up. Awesome, I can see. Fantastic. Awesome. So the holiday paradox, coping with stress during the holiday time. Let's see. So as Sandrine said, I'm James Brunson. Uh, I, I hail from the Carolinas, uh, but I now live in DC. Um, a marriage and family therapist. Um, yes, I see individuals as well. So many different backgrounds, so many different experiences. Um, and I am here to just share whatever information I can. Um, hopefully, I, I usually make some sort of cunning joke about my cats, but I believe they're asleep right now, so you don't have to worry about any disturbances. Um, that's that's the virtual world for you. Um, and as of like two months ago, I got married, so I'm kind of feeling some holiday bliss while also holiday stress. So we're in it together. And so here's what we'll experience today. Um, I think it's important that we bring some awareness to um, our experience of stress during this time, like what is that? What's happening to our bodies? I won't get too deep into the science of it, although like I love it. There's a there's a little blurb about the science of what goes on, but I won't overwhelm you all. It's more so about making sure that you all have something that you can kind of take away. Um, and so we'll talk about boundary setting, um, accepting differences, uh, setting limits, priorities, simplifying our expectations. Um, and I include it in this slideshow if we get to it, depending on what you all know, feel is uh, the most important, but I included this slideshow about um, one of my favorite techniques as far as prioritizing. Um, it's usually used within the corporate world, but I think it can be applied to really just how human beings use their energy in general. 
Um, and so we'll also talk about some tools and techniques um, and some soothing exercises. There, there's, there's one that I didn't include, but I may just tell you about it when we get there because it re requires a lot of priming, but I think it's also an interesting one. Um, but we'll talk about that. All right, some housekeeping stuff. This is your space. I am just a visitor. Right? I am just somebody who's gifted to visit the space. Um, and so show up as you as you feel comfortable. Um, if you want to be on camera, off camera, if you want to put your comments in the chat or you want to um, invite or uh, let the rest of us um, hear you, like you're welcome to do that. Um, ask the hard questions. Uh, my my hope for this presentation and all the every time I get the opportunity to be before people is like, yes, there's a lot of information. I mean, it's it's really about making sure that those who are here and those who are going to watch this later can feel like they have something. If it's just that one thing, those of you who've been on a presentation with me before, mm -hmm. it's about taking away that one thing, like not everything, but just grab something uh, and breathe. We're all in this together. Okay. Uh, okay. So who's here? This is just my opportunity to do a check and see if anybody has joined. So we got Nancy, Melissa, Sandrine, Maya, Tanya. And I believe, Tanya, were you in our presentation last week? I believe that name, that name and that photo was awesome. I believe that name looked familiar. Um, so welcome back. Uh, and I uh, thank you all for being here. And we'll move on. And so some questions that I thought of um, that I would love to hear some of y'all's answers or you can put it in the chat. Um, but during this time of year, and if we were to highlight time of year, I would say from... November 1st to the 31st, like New Year's Eve, like in this time frame, maybe even a little bit in October, I think it starts creeping in there. But let's just say like during those those months, like how how do you recognize stress for you? How does it show up for you during this time of year? What does it feel like? Anybody can go or you can write it in the chat. I can check the chat real quick. Anybody? I can leave with this one. Oh, flustered. Thank you, Sandrine. Flustered. A lot of energy going out. Anyone? I'll leave with the vulnerability. I'll share. Oh, go ahead, Nancy. Go. It's uh, just like, I don't know, not overextended, but just like trying to meet expectations. You know, you want it to be such a great experience mm -hmm. for everybody and, and sometimes even just like gift giving too you know just mm -hmm. trying to get to the essence of you know mm -hmm. that yep. and sometimes you think you have to over over overthink it you know mm -hmm. so sometimes that's just sort of and i'm always a little behind the eight ball because i'm always too too busy busy getting work done that can't get to that kind of stuff sometimes and absolutely. that stresses me out a little bit absolutely thank you so much for that nancy yeah i'll I'll share mine. Mine's similar to um, actually to the both of yours now that now that like this is you're also executing like the power of vulnerability because hearing and reading what you two have shared, I'm like, mm, me too. Yeah, like I'm a little bit flustered, a little bit disorganized while also trying to manage like I have a job and a marriage and a and a family and I gotta hang the Christmas tree and I gotta do all of these different stuff to kind of um attend to the time of year it's like it requires more energy for us um I, oh yeah getting emotional thinking about love and family yep that is your know, you, your use of it isn't always how you expect it is i think just kind of spot on which where the stress can kind of come in at because we're oftentimes confronted with what we hope and expect and then the reality of how things can be and it's it's that pain that's in between how are y'all usually managing y'all's stress um, during this time of year? Do you have like go-to techniques? Do you have um, exercises or boundaries that you already have in place that helps you to get through the holiday season? What's already in practice? If anything, it doesn't have to be. I think that's why we have this presentation so we can talk about how to make sure we have that. <laughs> I would say um, I would share um, for me what what works for me is I pretty much have to almost daily remind myself of some sort of practice of acceptance. Like I have to get to like this morning, I was writing uh, thank you cards 
right before starting the day. And I had to tell myself, okay, come nine o'clock, you have to accept that you have not finished all of these thank you cards in order to get ready for your day. Like I had to give myself a bit of a time boundary of like, hey, you would really love to get this all done before work, but like at nine o'clock, you're done with it. So I have to do some sort of practice like that almost daily to give myself permission to not have everything completed. And we'll talk about priorities in a second. Um, what would be the most helpful for me to focus on today? Anything come to mind? Like, would it be what the experience of stress is, how to manage it, how to do boundaries, how to lower expectations? Does anybody have anything that they would like to know a little bit more of? Even if some of you who were on the presentation last week, is there something that kind of lingers that you want to know a little bit more about? Um, please share or put it in the chat. Um, I would say stress management. Sorry. I agree with Maya. Say that. Can you say that again for me, Maya? Stress management. Cool. And how to kind of take um, preventative measures or try to, because I was on I was on this last week and I found my my I was the one that found my twin, my Pisces twin. Oh, your Pisces yes. twin. That's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I just want a little bit, you know, like, um you know, a little bit in depth of how to like kind of, because I'm that's what I'm trying to do right now is like sometimes mm -hmm. because like I said last week, like I could pick up when I'm starting to, you know, I'm starting to see signs of when I'm starting to get stressed or mm -hmm. aggravated, but it's how, how can I, like you said, like I'm trying to figure out ways to kind of divert that, you know? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for that, Melissa and Maya. Like when we get to that, um, when we get to the session again, I'll run through a little bit more of the um, the experiences and like the boundary stuff. But then when we get to even more, some of the tools, like I may call back to you again to see if you may be willing to um, maybe provide some like role play or real play examples, and we can workshop it. Kind of like I, I believe I can't remember um, the person's name last week it was like a ronald or ray or something like that your pisces twin um i remember like ray the, uh, ray ray yes, the, it was uh, ray. <laughs> yeah ray shared some vulnerability and it kind of a lot of, uh, like allowed me to um really kind of speak directly to him and so if you're willing to do that later on to maybe give a, an example of something that you may be more comfortable with sharing like we can workshop it a little bit okay since it's you know small small crew of us and so we got we can use that time. Awesome, sweet. We'll move on. All right. Those of you who know me, love to end like put a little pause in there to just I I invite that y'all to participate in that. And also that's for me as you know's presenter to like remind myself that. I'm not here to perfect anything, but just to show up as the best version of me. And that indeed is enough. All right. Let's proceed. All right. As some of you may remember, those who haven't or who haven't been here or have uh, maybe watching this for the first time, just a little information about stress. It's our emotional and physical like tension that comes from any event that makes us feel so many different emotions. Um, it's our reaction to a challenge or to a demand in short bursts, it's it's fine. Like a stress can make us perform well, it can make us engage, it can keep us safe. Um, it's it's more so the long-term chronic stress that tends to have an adverse uh, reaction on our bodies, a stress that's enduring, that's maybe even sometimes feels never ending. And you have your four types. You have physical, psychological, psychosocial, and you also have psychospiritual. Um, and usually when I'm maybe talking about um, burnout, burnout tends to be a little bit more of a psychological stressor. That's the the face with the the male coming out of the screen. That's more so like the stress that like comes up at, at work. Um, what I notice that's special or maybe kind of paradoxical about the holiday times is you can actually run into all four of these relatively quickly. Um, and the physical stress that oftentimes we feel during this time is the overexertion of our energy, right? It's um, if you're anything uh, like me or this past holiday for Thanksgiving, I did probably more cooking than I've probably ever done in my life. 
And so like for two or three days, I could feel the soreness in my feet and the pain in my back. And so that I had was experiencing some physical stressors, um, some physical injury. Uh, and so during the holiday time, I think so much of this comes out where you get all four of them. And even um, the last one, the one that says like, who am I, which is a psycho-spiritual um, stress. Because holiday time tends to move people into a level of reflection that they often don't get throughout the year. Um, we have a lot of social priming about what holiday time is supposed to look like. Um, whether it being with family or being with a romantic partner or having money to buy gifts. And so oftentimes um, I notice with my client population, um, there can be a lot of um, values that come up of like how we believe we should be during this time of year or how we believe our partners and our families should be acting or what they should do for us. And so a lot of times it's that dissonance of expectation and reality during this time of year. Um, stress, it activates what's called our flight, fight, or freeze. That may be common uh, knowledge uh, to uh, some of you here. Um, I have was informed over the past couple months that research is introducing a fourth um, activator of stress um, or a fourth response to stress, which is fawn. Um, I'm still uh, developing that uh, professionally to see um, how that fits, but for like for the sake of this presentation, we'll just stick to the flight fighter foods for right now. Um, and so this is what's happening when we're feeling stress. Um, so our sympathetic system gets activated. Um, there is, uh, or our parasympathetic gets activated. And so there's, we're constantly in this flux of increased heart. Our pupils are dilating. Like there's a lot of gastrointestinal issues. And so like all this to say, like stress has a pretty widespread impact on us because we have a high production of this wonderful, not so wonderful thing called cortisol. And if this may or may not be familiar to you, but this is our body's primary stress hormone. So when you are feeling that headache or that irritability or that tiredness or that frustration, um, what's being hyperproduced in your body is cortisol. Naturally, our bodies already have this hormone because again, stress in the acute and immediate is not um, a bad or a difficult or adverse reaction. But when our bodies have to overproduce it, it also means that it's overworking to metabolize it, okay? So here's some of the effects of that increased cortisol. So you have the chronic fatigue, sleep deprivation, arthritis, hunger, hostility. And um, I added these stars because like these two are kind of the number, like the top ones that I see during this time of year. Um, and... It's interesting going back to the four different types of stress, um, you're kind of getting it from all sides. Your body may take on the physical stress. The workload is kind of increasing. You're having, you know, the tension or you're feeling you're, you're feeling feelings and your partner or your family is feeling feelings. And then you're also in this reflective state. So you're just getting it from all fronts. And so this is where we owe ourselves an immense amount of grace uh, during this time of year. Thank you for that, Sandrine, like highlighting those two. I, those are definitely a part of the top two, uh, the decreased metabolism and like we're gaining more weight. We're not as active. Also, we have the environment where it's kind of colder and darker. So we're less willing to be active. So like we are getting it from all fronts, all fronts. Let's move on. So as, as some of you mentioned, um, as Melissa, as you mentioned earlier, like let's talk a little bit about tools. And this is definitely um, a revisitation of previous. Oh, Maya, thank you for that. The, great question. Uh, I don't know if you all can see in the chat, but Maya asked about tunnel vision. And so this actually reminds me also what um, Sandrine mentioned earlier, at least my version of flustered is Tunnel vision is when there is a narrow viewpoint or there's a hyperfixation on one thing. So I'll give you an example. So during the holiday time, if you celebrate Christmas or any other like tradition where there's gift giving, you can become so focused on the gift giving that you forget that, oh, I have this work project. 
oh, oh my gosh, I forgot I need to um, drop this thing off here. And so your brain, because it's overworking, it tries to reset by saying like, I'm just going to laser focus on this. And we'll talk about the priorities in just a minute. Um, and so we tend to lose track and eventually getting flustered um, of all of our obligations. So we basically move in one obligation and forsake the rest. That answer your question, Maya? Yeah, cool. Yes, thank you. Great question. Great question. All right. Those of you who know me, my favorite is our favorite tool when it comes to dealing with our holiday stress. And I, I switched it up a little bit to where we specifically will be talking about boundaries that I think come up during the holiday time in particular. Okay. What are they? It's a space between you and another person. It's a space that we need in order to be our real selves without having to be something else. It is where we start and where we stop. It is where our availability lies, okay? I feel like in the 10 years that I've been working um, in this field, I don't know a, a greater perspective or a concept that has been most beneficial to my client population than boundaries. It's just something that's not taught to us. It's not something that necessarily is infiltrated into our education system or in our family system. So like this monitoring our availability during this time of year is what I think is the most challenged, right? We're stretched thin. So we'll talk about it. All right. So here's just like a, a, a brief thing, like boundaries. You have to back it up with setting action. You have to be direct, firm, and yet gracious. You don't have to debate your boundaries and you don't have to over explain them. Um, and it's it's so important that when it comes to boundaries, we realize that it's about our availability and not what we're demanding someone to do. Telling someone to um, don't talk to me that way, that's not a boundary. Like that's a command, right? And that's usually why they don't work. Uh, it's because when we're attempting to have boundaries, which we give ourselves grace and validation for, usually we're distributing or um, providing rules and regulations and commands to people, which if you haven't learned anything about a human being, if you try to tell them what to do, the first line of defense is to be resistant, right? So there's that. So if you're trying to manage your boundaries with your family during the holiday times, or if any of you have children or relatives that live with you or romantic partners, Think about maybe some of your stress that you have with them or some things that you may need from them. If you, oftentimes we share our needs and commands. Stop, don't do this. You need to do this. You need to not do this. Usually when we're trying to express boundaries, we're directing people and not inviting them to understand our availability. But we'll talk about it, okay? Um, some this may, This formula may be familiar to some of you and yet it is remains powerful. Here's the formula for the boundaries that we're going to need during this holiday time. Okay. The acknowledgement, the explain, the offer is our boundary. Okay. And the acknowledgement, you have to name the reality, the factual elephant in the room, right? So during the holiday time, you may say, we've been spending more money this month. That is a tangible, factual thing that you literally can go on your bank account and see if you were to itemize everything that you spent month by month. If you look at December, November, there's more money being spent. Or you may say something like, I have not been getting enough sleep. Or I have no plans for the holiday. Something that I have to be mindful of is there's oftentimes a lot of loneliness during this time of year as well. And so I thought as I was curating this presentation and tweeting. That's right. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for that 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 share, that vulnerability there, because it's not oftentimes talked about. It's just assumed that everybody has the same reality. And I think that can be immensely invalidating. And so as I was thinking through these boundaries, I thought, well, how does someone who doesn't have the socially typical family you know, structure during this time, how do they express boundaries? How do they express needs? And so I threw this, um, this line in there of like, I have no plans for the holidays, right? That's a factual reality that may be happening to someone, okay? 
And so the next part of it is to explain how you feel about that acknowledgement. All right. So you verbalize the emotions about the experience. I feel blank about or when something is happening. So I feel worried about what will happen if we spend any more on gifts and the more being money. All right. Or you may say, like, I feel tired and irritable. Right. Sandrine, when you mentioned flustered, I very quickly thought, like, when I'm flustered, my fuse uh, becomes very limited. I'll say it that way. Right. Agree. <laughs> I agree. You agree. You feel you feel me on that. You feel the empathy yes. on that. Yeah. It's like, who I'm flustered. Or um, Maya, when you mentioned tunnel vision as well, I thought if I am hyper focused on something, and here comes another distraction, uh, that distraction may experience something that is not the most loving, or the most accommodating to that because I am so focused on making sure that these gifts are wrapped perfectly. Right. It's got to be perfect. Um, and so you may say, I'm feeling tired, I'm feeling irritable. Or you may say, like, I feel worried about feeling sad on Christmas Day. I have many clients right now who um, actually, over the years with the pandemic and just life, have lost loved ones this year. And so many people are going to be feeling that impact of that loneliness or the change or the grief that they've experienced this year. And so much of that will come up again around this time of year. And I wanted to add this um, this wheel uh, to this presentation because I just I just noticed, and this is just my experience. I can only speak to my experience as a professional, as a human being. I don't know how y'all feel, but it's very hard to name emotions. Like I, it oftentimes if someone says, "Oh, how are you feeling today?" What you usually might hear is "Good, fine, okay." all right, or they may even say bad, right? Those are not emotions. Those are descriptions of our emotions. And if you think about it, they don't really tell you much. Like, oh, I'm feeling good. You now have to think about, okay, well, well, what's good to them, right? Does that mean that you got enough sleep? Does that mean that you ate last night? Does that mean that you're, you know, you're feeling energized today? It leaves a lot of mystery, when we name emotions, I think this is where we actually can have people understand us and empathize with us. And it's already happened. Think about it, Tangerine and Maya, like, um, and even uh, Tanya too, I remember from like last week, when you all name emotions, think about how quickly I'm like, oh, me too. As soon as you say flustered, I can very quickly say like, oh, I know what that feels like. But if you were just to say good, I it would take me a minute to understand. And so when we're trying to manage our stress during this holiday time, I think the more clear and concise we can be about our feelings, I think people can better understand us. And that is what draws us closer to one another, right? So I wanted to add this. And so the offer is where you put the real boundary out not assuming that people know what you need. So you may have something that, that says, you know, I'm not able to spend any more money on gifts this year. I'm going to go take a nap to recharge. Or if you're experiencing loneliness or uh, wanting to have more connection, you may put out an offer that says, I would like to celebrate the holiday with someone. Are you available? Right, that's a boundary. I would like to celebrate the holiday. And then you're now inquiring about what the other person's boundary is. If the other person has availability, Does that makes sense. And so if we were to put it all together, um, you may say like, I've noticed that we've spent a lot of money thus far on gifts. And I'm worried about what will happen if we keep spending. And so I realized that I have no more money to buy any more gifts. So that if you were in a situation where you were partnered with someone or in somebody's family or even at your job, right? If your job, you know, I don't know how you all function there, but uh, at my husband's job, they're doing a secret Santa thing. And um, there, you know, there's a gift amount, there's a maximum. And so like, I'm just thinking that's kind of assuming that everybody has means to participate in secret Santa. And so I thought, well, how does one voice a boundary if they don't have the means to participate? It's like, I've spent a lot of money this year and I'm not available, 
you know, I'm worried about, you know, overextending myself by participating in Secret Santa. So I'm not available to buy any more gifts this year. Right. Um, Melissa, would you be willing or anybody actually, I don't want to put you on the spot, Melissa, but would anybody be willing to um, present a stressor um, that they experience during this time of year that they feel that they want to better manage it by having better boundaries? Does anybody have any specific example of something that they are thinking about? Or um, there was a pre-webinar question that I didn't ask, um, but it was, is there a particular stressor that you're anticipating for this year that maybe boundaries could be our method of um, protecting ourselves or our method of managing the stress? Let me check the chat too. They work. So, yeah. Yeah. Go, go, go ahead, Nancy. Oh, please. I, don't, I just, in, in the past, I always had this issue with boundaries. Uh, this is when I was living in the Northeast, where all my family's from, I was living in Montclair, and I had, my home was always the central location, you know, mm. every, a huge family. So everybody would congregate. I would always be called on during the holidays to be the host, you know, to host uh. the whole program, the whole big feast, and this, that. Everybody participated, but, you know, sometimes, especially year end kind of stuff, I'd be quite overwhelmed with that because, you know, you, as the host, you have to do everything to get, get the table set, so to speak. So I remember mm -hmm. struggling with that because I wanted to make sure that everybody felt comfortable because it was traveling from different distances and clearly was the easiest place to to centrally locate. But finally, I just said, when I was asked to do it again, I said, you know, um, I hear you. You really want me to host mm -hmm. again. And I love hosting. Mm -hmm. I love mm -hmm. it to the degree that, you know, you enjoy coming to my home. However, I'm just really overwhelmed now because mm -hmm. I'm like year end and each year I feel like I'm mm -hmm. trying to meet, meet everybody's expectations, but I just am afraid mm -hmm. that I'm not going to be able to put the, my time and effort into it or I'm going to miss something. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So um, I'm overwhelmed. And ah. And then, you know, I'd hear all this mumbling, mumbling. And I said, but, <laughs> but what I want to be, here's my pro code offer. I want to be participating here. Yeah, yeah. How about we do it in a different way this year? I mean, I'll be happy to cook two or three things for the meal. It might be, you know, easier that way. And it'll, I'll, I'll be able to show up. But maybe we can do it at someone else's home. I'll help to cook more of the meal, though. Yeah, uh, something like that, you know. No, but no, that's beautiful. Like, I... The, the the two or three like main things I hear in that is there was the honesty or the acknowledgement of how the experience was impacting you. And you put out this offer and this, I wouldn't even call it like you put out this, uh, uh, this offer that you were also willing to negotiate mm -hmm. and willing to accommodate, but just in a different way. Yes. Yeah, a, yeah. A, a phrase that, that you said that I wrote down, you said, you know, usually I want to make sure that everyone is comfortable. And in my mind, I thought in your boundaries or make sure that you're a part of that everyone, that it's not just everyone outside of you, but that everyone includes you. And so mm -hmm. that's what the boundaries that you set there and what boundaries do for us conceptually is that like, as we really that's you have people in your life that you clearly love these people and you clearly want to make sure that everyone has a good experience this is making sure that you also include yourself in that and our boundaries help do that for us that's I, like i'm feeling overwhelmed and i'm willing to help cook i'm not willing to do this or i'm not i'm available to do a little bit extra here while i'm not as available to do as much over here yes so, exactly. so you get to I like to call it the dance of autonomy or the dance of boundaries where we don't have to get into a fight or a brawl. I'm just letting you know that as the best, the best version of me can show up when I'm available for this, right? The not so great version is when I'm available for everything. Mm. And what I, what I try to remind so many of my clients during this time of year, that if you're available for everything, that probably means you're available for nothing. Mm. Right? Yeah. If, if everything is getting all of you, then everything is probably not getting you it's just getting a fragment of you thank you for that Nancy I think that's a great example of what can happen during this time where there's this expectation for you to provide more than you're available for mm -hmm. and that's you know it's funny it's funny because um it was easier to I mean it's sensibly a little, a little challenging but it was easier yeah. and you know everybody heard that and um mm -hmm. wants us to live 
you know, 15 minutes up the parkway. And so yeah, yeah. it got shifted, but I felt so much better. It was mm. like, you. Mm -hmm. It's relieving. It's, you our, feel, our boundaries yeah. are kind of scary on the front end because we don't know how people are going to respond and react to it. But then once we do it and we climb over that, that hill, it's like oh, the relief that you get. And, and what's happening in there, like down to like a neurological level, is you are literally telling your body that I'm willing to protect you. And yes. so your body says, thanks. <laughs> right? That's where we get, that's where the reward system of our brain starts to light up and you start to feel giddy. Like, oh, I just did that thing for me. And the main thing that you did was voice your truth about what you're actually available for and what you're not. Yes, yes. So going back to that slide of our boundaries help us to be the best version of ourselves because they're the most honest and the most loving and the most caring and protective version of ourselves. Great example though, Nancy. Anyone else, anyone else have like a particular stressor that they tend to experience during this time of year that you may want to workshop and dance with some boundary play a little bit? Melissa, wait, did I see you unmute earlier? Did I say that? No. I put you on the spot again. No, that was I. <laughs> I was really listening. Okay. Is, um, but I don't really have anything for like around this time of the year. But yeah, like right yeah. now, like I am dealing with you know some personal stuff. But yeah. um, like one, I would I'm trying to think of um one of like a a situation is like I was gonna ask is like um like Maya has said with like with regarding like family members and stuff mm -hmm. like that mm -hmm. like right now like because of the situ the current situation that's going on like I'm mm -hmm. trying to like remain neutral and just uh, stay yeah. out the way yeah and Ooh, I'm like I'm trying to put trying to set like boundaries with everyone mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it's just like even though I'm setting the boundaries or, you know, I'm trying to like, you know, give subtle hints. So it's like, I don't offend anyone. People mm -hmm. are just like, not trying to get the message or it's like, they're just mm, overlooking it. So there. yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, that becomes frustrating for me because it's just like now I'm like, you're not trying to understand when I'm trying to like, either talk to you, you know, one-to-one -one and you know mm -hmm. express you know certain things how I'm feeling calmly mm. but and it's just like I don't want to get to that point where it's just like you know like I start to get frustrated and I start to yell or I don't want like I don't like mm -hmm. those types of feelings and it's just like the situation like I said it I don't know what to do with that, with that because it's just like if people don't want to acknowledge what you're trying to say to them I don't mm. know what to do with that <laughs> oh yeah wow I received that and and I, I really like that you said like, like yes it it may be a stressor that may be happening at this holiday time not necessarily perpetuated by the holiday time but remember earlier when I said that there are like four different types of stress and we start to get it from all sides and so you have this what's a it's a psychosocial stressor like like a, a relational stressor that's happening while all these other things are going on too, you have a job and there's the environment and there's all these other things kind of manage. And I, I must commend you because trying to operate from a place of neutrality while there's relational conflict is brave. That is very brave because oftentimes neutrality is registered as opposition. That if you are not aligning with me boldly, well then therefore you are an adversary. And you're trying to like, actually, I'm on nobody's side. Exactly. I'm, actually I'm just, just to yeah. myself. This is just <laughs> me. Like, I'm just being pulled into it, but I don't want to be. Yeah. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. I don't want to be in the middle. Nothing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Where, you know, it, it clearly it's a complex situation. So I would never try to attempt as if like, this is a solution or like, this is what will fix it. Um just the loudest thing that's coming to my mind right now, and especially in respect to just talking about boundaries, it's that uh, that second part of the boundary, which is the explaining or the voicing of how you're feeling by naming the emotion. So I'll give you an example. I don't know what's going on, so I'm using a little bit of clinical imagination, right? But it's if someone's coming to you with something and you clearly told them that like you are not interested um, in that information or you don't want to be involved with it, I then started actually using um, a little bit about what um, 
Lancey said earlier when she voiced this feeling, the fear and sadness. I f am afraid, like, and this is me, like, talking as you, they just came to you and they said something, and you may say something to this extent, like, I'm, af I'm afraid what will happen if I don't align with you in this conflict, and it makes me really sad that I have to maintain these boundaries in order to make sure that I stay safe in this situation. Or I feel really sad that this is happening and you want me to support you in a way that I'm not capable of supporting you. Like, do you hear that? Like, imagine, like, I, and every time I- can I, see myself using some of that, which yeah. you just said, because it is pertaining to like some situations yeah. and it's just like, I don't know how else to say it, you know, mm -hmm. so- and so where, and especially when there's, there's usually a slide when I do other presentations, particularly about boundaries in this particular area, it's like what to expect when somebody doesn't respect your boundary. I usually encourage people that they're your job to maintain regardless of who respects it or not, right? But it becomes this, you get to almost keep voicing the acknowledgement of the boundary if they keep going, especially like, gosh, I just feel really sad that I cannot support you in the way you want to be supported. Or if you really want to get validating is that I cannot, I feel really sad that I'm not available to support you in the way in which you deserve to be. I'm just imagining if someone said that to me, my entire defense is probably going to come down. Like you just told me that you feel sad that you aren't able to really give me what I need and what I deserve. And I get it. Like, yes, there's outliers to everything. There's some people who are just not going to respect your boundaries if you're not giving them what they want immediately. But again, that becomes the beautiful opportunity for you to keep expressing how sad it is that people are not getting needs met. And you can empathize with that. If, does that make sense? Is that helpful? Does that, does that make sense? I, I, could, I could talk for hours about that particular subset of boundaries when they're challenged. Yeah, no, that is just like, like I said, like a lot of what you just said, like it kind of mm -hmm. hit spot on. So it's just like, Fantastic. yeah, you're going in the right time. <laughs> I appreciate Please. everything. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. When in doubt, voice the feeling. Yes. Pe people can empathize with your feelings. They can't empathize with your experiences. Not as, not as easy. Okay. Okay. Thank you for that. Keep that neutrality. That's bold. That's bold. <laughs> Um, Sandrine, you wrote in the chat about financial boundaries, and I think I was talking about financial boundaries at that time. Did you did you get what you needed or you say something further about financial boundaries? Yes and no. I think yeah. it's just it's really more so up to the person, right? And this is a time of year where you know family members and loved ones who are in need will reach out. And mm -hmm. the thing is you get multiple people reaching out and yeah. what what's been helped now becomes burdensome, right? Yeah, and how, yeah. I don't know if it's a gentle way of also saying no, mm -hmm. right? In, mm -hmm. um, in, a way, in a way that the person will understand mm -hmm. or is it also more so a, um, a no for me to understand that I'm putting inundated burden mm -hmm. on myself as well to say yes, or, you know, just say yes, even though I know it wouldn't be to, towards my benefit, or it may even put me in a financial strain to Absolutely. help somebody, right? Because, mm -hmm. you know, you get conflicted with the tis the season to, you know, help and be merry and you want people yeah. to have a great holiday, but you also don't want to be stressed out with, you know, feeling like, you know, the money plant or, you know, the, yeah, the right. wall. And, yeah. Yeah. and especially when you're a giver and not a receiver, mm. you know, it can seem very heavy. So I, I know I said a lot. No, so no, that's no, perfect. No, that's perfect. Thank you so much for sharing that because clearly like, I, I don't know whose attention that was getting, but they could empathize. You were you were coming down their lane, if you will. They felt it like, oh, yeah, I know that feeling. of Yeah, that was me, Tanya. Um, Tanya, okay. Yeah, because okay. I agree with that because, you know, I have a child, you know, um, mm -hmm. well, he's he's not a child anymore, but he's my child. He's 18 yeah. and um, yeah. I can't do a lot for him, you know, so mm -hmm. I understand her. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, you can, you know, that 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 responsibility, that weight of kind of giving. And so the again, much like how I said to 
And this is like, I've never attempted like, hey, like here's this like quick solution and like that's gonna fix it. I just offer a perspective, offer something that you can take and build upon. The, and the first thing that kind of comes to my mind is very similar to what Nancy and both Melissa um, kind of experience is like naming the the fear and the sadness of not being able to give, right? Because at the core of it, it's sad. It's sad that they're in need and it's sad that you are not available to attend to their every need. Just at the core of it. It's, it's a hard, hurtful thing to experience that. And so when it comes to our financial boundaries during this time of year, I believe it's important to offer ourselves some diversity. Whereas, hey, hey, Sandrine, can I borrow, you know, you know, $50 right now? It's like, gosh, I don't have it to give. And that's sad that I that I don't have it. Is there another way that I could support you? So that if you go back to that formula of the offer and the negotiation, what is so important or what I think can be so useful during this holiday time is that we remember that there's multiple ways of supporting people. Support isn't just like a dollar sign spelling support, right? Support is, is any thing that you're willing to share or offer to another person that you actually have the availability for. I don't have that money. Could I be a listening ear for you? I don't have that money. Are you willing to come over to my house to eat? Right? If you're willing to do that, of course, right? But it's it's negotiating like ah, my favorite example of this. And I think I gave this example uh, last week in the other group. Whereas if I go to McDonald's and, and I say, hey, may I have a hot fudge Sunday? And they say, oh, sorry, the ice cream machine is down. Usually they say, it's, can we offer you something else? We don't have ice cream, but we have cheeseburgers, we have cookies, we got pies, we got sweet teas. We have other things on the menu here. And so the, if I were to shorten and sweeten it, it's like there are other things on your, on your menu. So make sure you also let people know that. Okay? Like money may not be on the menu, but is my time, is my energy, is my word of encouragement. Is my like, do you need a hug? Like, if, do you need comfort? Right. Is I'm that you? Try those. You see what I'm saying? To see yourself as more available than just offering money. Right. right. Your spirit is just. I do not want to offer my time because that is also busy and booked already. Absolutely. So, you know, it's just no one to take out from the offer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I mean, mm -hmm. I literally responded to someone, you know, hey, sorry, I didn't see this. I hope that worked out for you. And I felt horrible. Like, yeah, you know, I felt yeah. horrible not saying yes or even trying to circle mm -hmm. back because I didn't want to have that uncomfortable no conversation. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's that's really the journey that I, that you're not alone, that you're not alone in that, Sandrine. It's like, it's learning to accept our boundaries, right? But again, if our boundaries are designed or intended to make us the most well version of ourselves, you, if you think about it, you're feeling guilty for being well. You're like, we're feeling embarrassed for caretaking, like, of us. But that's because we live, there's a bit of a social priming that selflessness is the goal of optimizing our humanity, right? To always be giving, that is how we get our value, right? So we have the option to give something else other than our time and our money. And also like giving back to us is also where we get value too. And so we're, even as we're having this conversation, we're dismantling a lot of the macro level systems that tell us we always have to be available or else that's the only way that we're going to be valuable. And that's the only way that we're going to be loved. Like that's what's at the core of this is as we give, we earn love, we earn respect, we earn appreciation. All of that, if if the love, respect, appreciation, if it costs you your well-being, is it really worth it? Debatable. Um, but I, I wanted to offer you all this too. And um, as far as like prioritizing things, so I said this at the beginning that like this is usually used in like the corporate world when it comes to like 
uh, prioritizing tasks. Um, it's it's called the Eisenhower matrix. But I would I would offer it like even like as an emotional thing too, where it's like, okay, so what you all can do with this, and like you'll get this presentation, but you could basically literally like make this cross like on your paper and write down, okay, what's urgent and important for me during this holiday time? What's important but not urgent? What's not important but urgent? And what's not important and not urgent? So like, if you think about these quadrants on a piece of paper, you can list out, okay, it's urgent for me. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking about Thanksgiving. It's urgent for me to take that turkey out three days before Thanksgiving, because if I don't let it thaw, I won't be able to cook it. So I, I, so it was urgent for me and it was important or else like, I'm going to have a turkey. So it was, and then I thought about, okay, well, what's urgent, but like not important. Okay. It's not it's urgent that my husband go like that. We have people coming um, up into our apartment, but I'm doing this. It's more important for me to be at this stove. So I delegated like, hey, go let everybody in. It's important, but it wasn't urgent for me. What was urgent for me was making sure that I don't burn those greens on the stove. Right. And so what I like about this chart is that it really helps you see how you spend your energy and how you want to allocate your time and your resources, because that is what gets really strange during this time of year, our money, our time, our resources, which is really encapsulates all of it, because that also means the use of your body. Does that make sense? And like, if you, if, if anybody who's here, anybody who's going to watch this, if you, if you just Google, um, Eisenhower, like it's actually named after like President Eisenhower, um, Eisenhower matrix, like you'll see again, that it's kind of, built towards the corporate world, but there's a way to kind of tweak it to really organizing how you want to spend your energy. Okay. Um, just I'm going to run through these last couple of things just because they're important and I want y'all to have it. Um, the What's going to be the most important thing about managing our stress during this time is the awareness of self. Earlier, the question was, how do you know when you're feeling stressed, Right. How do we know that we're feeling irritable, we're feeling flustered. And so the moment that that happens, that is when you get to move into soothing yourself. And I'm I'm actually just going to just leave it at this like main one and I'll I'll prime it and you'll and you'll know why. So this breathing technique, the four, seven, eight breathing technique. So it's breathing in for four seconds through your nose, holding for seven seconds and then exhaling for eight. While I wish I had the hours to explain how impactful that this exercise is for our poly, for our vagus nerve or slowing down our parasympathetic system, right? I would like to see you all manage your jobs, you all manage your relationships, you manage your families, you manage the intricacy of the world. I would like to see you do all of that without having access to air. It would be impossible. James, can I just chime in? I yes. just want to thank you on touching on this because when we did the pause earlier and we took the deep breath, yes. I wanted yes. to say there is something very important about breathing. There it you is. Don't stop to really breathe, and it's a there full it reset of the body. There it is. literally yeah. will calm us and it'll still us in a moment Absolutely. where we can, you know, gather our thoughts, emotions, yep. and you know, uh, mm -hmm. you know, you are right up my alley. Thank you so much for saying this. Yes. Yes, yes, thank you for that, because it is literally vital to your existence, and yet it is something that goes ignored. We do it involuntarily, like it's it's happening right now, all of us are just breathing, but you don't think about the air until you don't have access to it, and yet it is the sustaining life force. So as I, I know we're out of time, and I can go on and on with talking about these things, and so if Earlier when I said, if you can just remember one thing during this time of year, one thing to help us manage our stress, it would, it, whether it be from understanding how stress operates in your body, understanding the boundaries that you may need to actually monitor your availability and your unavailability, or even remembering that you must take time to bring attention to your body's need for air because it is vital to your existence. Whatever it is, whatever is one of those things or any other things, or maybe it's just the ability to be in, in a presentation with a bunch of people who understand you. Um, thank you all for being here and taking that time out to 
hear something, learn something, be present with other people as it's a symbol that you are not alone. And we're all just trying to do the best we can with what we can. So think about the air. It's all around you. Use it as the life force to maybe ground you during this time of year. All right. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead, Nancy. No, that's just beautiful. And that's just such a a great way to kind of end this program. But at the same time, the idea of being present, I mean, that's yeah. something that's going to bring up a little earlier that I was a little stressed at, but mm -hmm. you were also stressed, but given what the season is, the, the opportunity to just be more self-aware and more present in a moment, at any given moment that you Absolutely. might be able to be something to someone that you had no realization that you were there for a need that you had no clue you were there for. Mm -hmm. So being gentle, kinder with yourself, gentler and kinder with the world, being just focused enough wherever you're going, you know, this holiday season, this is what I try to try to do. And I be just a, aware of what's around you. Even Absolutely. if it's somebody, a beautiful comment on the cashier line, Oh, you yeah, know, yeah. Today, you're wearing great, you know, just whatever it is. Because we yes. all feel better just even doing that. It's a stress reduction when you have an hey, impact. Paying attention know. matters. It's yeah, paying attention. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't, let the, don't let the season eclipse us, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Anyway. Nancy, thank you for having me here. Said Dream, thank you so much for always letting yes. me be a part. Thank you for your spirit, your energy. Thank you for everybody who was willing to show up. Uh, do the best you can with what you can and give, your great, give yourself grace and compassion for everything that's in between. Yes. All right. Thank All you right, so people. much, Take Jay. Care of yourselves we and each appreciate other. you. I'll see y'all soon. See you soon. <laughs> Happy holidays. We hope you Happy enjoyed holidays, everyone. Everybody. Take care. Everyone. Right, take good care. Bye.